Hello, my name is This is Joy News here to give you a live update on the current events at Onigashima. This chapter is heat. A chef on top of his game, serving up a fiery ass kicking. All of this and more on Joy News. First, we go to our traffic report. We have finally gotten closer to Momonosuke, who we could not see properly last chapter. And it seems that he is keeping the island at bay by holding on and pulling on the already existing clouds that Kaido has created. This is a truly commendable act by the young samurai, making sure that the people of his country does not suffer the catastrophic consequences of this island falling. Back to you. A truly commendable act indeed. I personally find this very clever on Oda's part to slowly build up and make Momonosuke's journey and role in saving his beloved country believable instead of producing his own flame clouds to keep the island afloat. His inexperience has forced him to have to come up with an alternative way on how to handle this situation. And figuring out that he is able to use Kaido's existing flame clouds means that instead of holding up the island in a show of mighty strength like his father, he is instead instead pulling the island away in the opposite direction. This not only subverts everyone's expectations of seeing Momonosuke in a similar stance like his father's Hour of Legends, while still continuing to build up Momonosuke's act of heroism in this act. This also gives more room for Oda to potentially control and extend the time limit that he set for each matchup, should he choose to do so. Next up, we check on weather. Cloud Grabber spotted. Um, the subject is the actual weather and not the individual, please. I see white light, L light lightning. As per the weather report, we've seen some unexplained lightning in this chapter, with some other reports saying that this seems to be the result of one heated up player, our very own Straw Hat Chef. While Sanji's fiery leg is familiar to us, though the source behind the move is still a little unclear, the sight of lightning is a new addition. One possible explanation for this, according to our physics scientists, is that lightning is the result of an imbalance between electric charges and can be produced not just during storm Storms, but also in volcanic eruptions. This is known to be the result of a violent and sudden explosion of particles which causes so much friction that it creates its own lightning. This seems to be an apt description of Sanji showing in this chapter, perhaps the violent burst of energy being the result of his emotions and strength causing his legs to not only flare up into fire but also lightning. Will the power of this new attack incorporating lightning that Sanji has conjured up be finally enough to topple one of the Beast Pirates' top officers. Next up in sports, the Mugiwara 56ers seems to be on the verge of closing out the funky Beast Pirates with the last chapter 1034's player of the game, Mugiwara's very own Sanji, delivering a phenomenal performance using his upgraded speed to inch the 56ers closer to victory. We go to our expert analysis for a breakdown. Ladies and gentlemen, what we've just witnessed today is nothing short of what they call a virtuoso performance, a legacy game. What we got from Sanji Vin Smoke, the Prince of Germa, box office, great straw hat, great cook, great gentleman. He got some issues. Yes, we understand. But today, I mean, look at the box score. 45 points, 25 rebounds, 10 assists. No turnovers. What we got from Sanji Vinsmo today in his performance against Queen the Plague and the Beast Pirates team is nothing short of the most sensational performance I've ever witnessed with my own two eyes. I mean, who else is doing it like Vinsmo? Who? I know he hates that name, but, you know, we got to keep things professional in the sports world. We have to do it. I understand. So we'll call him Sanji. Let's go back. What does this mean for Sanji's legacy? Well, clearly, he's on his way to the Admiral Hall of Fame. Clearly, he's, he's up to scratch. He's the wings of the Pirate King. He's there. Look what he did. We got the Arlong Park combinations. We have new techniques, super strength, super speed, armament hockey training, volcanic legs. He's a man of faith. What more could you want? I'm sorry, I know this is supposed to be a nice, calm, analytical segment, but this is, 
I've been a, I've been a fan of Sanji for so long. And what I have to say, ladies and gentlemen, is this is the greatest performance in the history of the Straw Hats that we have seen since Monkey D. Luffy versus Katakuri. I'm saying it. It is what it is. If you don't agree with me, that's not my problem. Back to you, JG. Wow, such enthusiasm. Thank you to our associate channel for providing us with such great analysis, for more of which you can check out yourself following the link below. With only one chapter left for the year and Queen's looming defeat, it raises the question of whether we will see Sanji's definitive victory to end the year, or whether we will move back to Zoro's fight with King and ceremoniously open the new year with the simultaneous defeat of the Beast Pirates commanders by the wings of the future Pirate King. A speculation that has been long held here at Joy News. But for now, this chapter is a great one for Sanji fans who not only got to witness the Straw Hat Chef serve up some tenderized dino meat, but has now been finally acquitted from all charges against hitting a young woman whose identity has been confirmed to be Osome. Miss Joystus, now that your client has had all charges dropped against him, both of you must be very relieved. Did you have any doubts? No, ever since chapter 1031, we've been very adamant about Sanji's innocence. It's been a hugely stressful time for him, having to fight against one of Kaido's top strongest officers with the whole world watching and doubting his chivalry. We're just glad that the true perpetrator has now been revealed, and that Joystus has been served. Thank you. What a relief indeed. Whilst there are even some fans who supported claims of Sanji's switch to the dark side, seeing it as an interesting turn of character development for the series, it does seem like this was too dark for the likes of One Piece, and admittedly, taking Sanji's character too far. In fact, the combined events of this chapter, with Sanji being cleared of his charges of hitting Osome, paired with no longer having his raid suit, and yet being able to essentially achieve invisibility is a very wholesome development for Sanji's character, who will now be able to turn invisible to help him in fights, and yet the absence of the raid suit itself will mean that he will no longer be frequenting bathhouses for less honourable means. Truly an awesome step forward for his character going to our on-site reporter for an exclusive interview. I think you mean an awesome, a Osome step forward. Speaking of whom, I am here with Osome's pet mouse, Sir's cousin, for an exclusive interview. Squeak, squeak, choo-choo. Hello, I'm Choo Joy. It's great to see that Choo played such an important part of the war inadvertently leading to the reveal of Sanji's innocence and his impressive showing against Queen. We mice love Sanji. He's a good one, that boy. He fed one of our own back in the German kingdom. We heard lots of good things about him down in the sewers. Go Sanji! Some people might say that a lot of screen time was spent bizarrely focusing on Chuji, but Chuji is a very special mouse. He's definitely our family's favorite. Go Chuji! Seeing so much of Chuji was definitely a surprise in this chapter, one which raised a quite a lot of eyebrows, but the payoff definitely made up for it. Back to you. What a wide network that mice have. Fans may remember that Chuji may have been a callback to the flashback we witnessed during the Whole Cake Island arc, where Sanji's pure and kind heart meant that he even befriended and fed a mouse in his childhood. The fact that its name is Chuji, similar to the naming scheme of the Vince Smoke brothers, whose names end with G, raises a fun idea of Chuji perhaps being related to the mouse we saw back in the North Blue during Sanji's younger years, and perhaps a mouse family has distant relatives who migrated to Wano sometime in the past. But most of all, it's a great callback when viewed in light with everything else that happened in this chapter that fits so well with Sanji's character development. Whilst the Whole Cake Island arc was a moral victory for Sanji, in Wano, it seems that we are close to getting the battle victory that we have long been waiting for. And amidst this all are a pair of mice whose importance is greater than they even realize. In business, a shocking scene, with what started as a promotional ad turned into an ugly scene between two top competing technology conglomerates, which has taken the internet by storm. Here at Germatech, we provide the best weapons of mass destruction. Our technology is so advanced that they exceed your wildest dreams. We have raid suits with abilities that go beyond your imagination. 
Germatech can provide you for all your battle needs. In fact, our technology is so good that our competitors want to steal from us. But why have Panasonic when you can have Panasonic? Why wear Adidas when you can have Adidas? Trust Germatech. Don't trust Germatech. What? Don't trust Germatech. What are you doing They're here? evil. His boss is hey, an abuser. Your boss your is boss a cheap copycat. He your boss he abuses is his so own children. unoriginal. He abuses he could little children. Get Queen Tech. Get Queen oh, Tech. Queen Tech for that's the win. That's rich. Yeah, I'm ready. You think your ready? boss cares I'm about your life? He you would give you up. Germatech, come on. Let's we'll have a tech on. Let's we'll have a tech on. Get Queen Tech. Get Queen Tech. We have the funkiest technology. Don't trust Germatech. Don't trust them. Queen's replication of Germa 66's technology continues to raise intrigue into the relationships within MADS. Given Queen's comments in this chapter about Judge and about Vegapunk in the past, it does seem like MADS contained great scientific egos who despite banding together, was also most likely at odds with each other. The science equivalent of the Rocks Pirates, it seems. It also raises an interesting question in that as it seems Judge put all of his scientific experimentation on his children, whereas Queen did it to himself, it does cause one to wonder what Vegapunk did with his experiments. Perhaps they'll be seen with the SSG unit. Queen not being able to copy Sanji's fiery leg in this chapter, and his confusion in a previous chapter about how Sanji's leg could be set alight, really does suggest that this is not the result of some germa modification and could be the outcome of something else. Apart from the added intrigue, it is a very nice detail as it could symbolize that Sanji's signature attack remains solely his own and is unrelated to his family, whom he despises so much. In entertainment, the events of this chapter has resulted in a recently released single climbing up the billboard since its kickoff last month to take the number one spot in this season's music charts. Heat on Feet, the hit single by Randy Troy and Eddie Heartthrob, has managed to feature in everybody's Spotify wrapped for 2021 and has even resulted in a new TikTok challenge. With only one chapter remaining for the rest of 2021 and with a break coming up next week, at least we have heat on feet to keep us entertained as we wait. This is Joy News and we'll see you again soon. Savage. He said the gods gave us food. Devil gave us spices. Certified drip. It's about to get spicy. Hey, hey, look. He don't feet, he don't feet, he don't feet, bro. He don't feet, he don't feet, bro. He don't feet, he don't feet, he don't feet, bro. He don't feet, he don't feet, he don't feet. I'm certified dripping. Catch me in my city. We about to get lit. I'm savage and I'm gritty. Look, yeah, I got the heat, got the heat, huh? And it's on my feet. Certified dripping Catch me in my city